Hello, my name is Marco from Nyoki. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to make connection uh, to a Lisa power supply. Um, in the market nowadays, there, there are three different types of connection that you may find, all right? Uh, the first, let me show you the first one. This is a uh, SPT uh, 60 watts, uh, but today they changed the design already, but uh, let me just show you uh, this kind of tube, okay? Uh, there's a two pin here, positive and negative. And this is, mm, I would say, the most difficult way for you folks to make the connection and it takes some technique. And uh, let me, uh, I will try this one first, all right? But let me let me show you other two laser tube. The another one is they have a they already make the pin uh, and the wires for you because as you may not know the laser tube pin you can use a soldering iron to wire the the uh, the, the I mean to wire to the to the pin because when you use a soldering iron to try to put the wire here. It can, it can damage the tube, all right? Uh, so nowadays, uh, the manufacturer kind of know about it, and that's why they pre-wire uh, to, to both sides, the negative and positive. positive. They already be pre wired all right? And the last type is uh, tube with screw. You can see from here, and the other two, two, the other side too. See that there's a two, two screw. This is most common way nowadays. Uh, Racy, GSI, SPT, and so many other brand ma or, or manufacturer, they are using this uh, connection. It's, it's kind of, I mean, this is more easy way to make the wire connection and less hassle, all right? But uh, there's something we need to, to care though, all right? Okay, this is part that we are going to use for today. And you may not use all because it depends which tube uh, do you have. Um, so you may not need to use all the parts. We have, the most important thing is the, the silicone uh, glue. This one you can get it from Home Depot. And I, I have this one open, so I'm going to use this one today. And this is another pretty handy pack. And then we have a heat shrink. This is for low voltage connection. And then we have a silicone tubing. Uh, we are going to use it for the high voltage cover. And then we have a torch. We need to use it uh, for, the, for the heat shrink. And what else? And then we have a cable tie gun. We have some tape, uh, cable tight some wires, and I was, by the way, I'm going to show you guys how to connect a current meter also with this video. And then we have sandpaper, and uh, we have cutter, a split, screwdriver, scissor, and, uh, and a tire. Okay, the first tube that I'm going to try today is the tube with two bare pin. Uh, this is the OSPT, but uh, there are still a lot of laser tube they are having this kind of setup. Okay, prior to make a connection, I need to get a, a sandpaper to clean up the, uh, the pin first. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of material it is, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is not metal and not stainless steel and it get oxidated pretty easy. So before we make any connection, we have to use uh, sandpaper or use some uh, uh, metal brush to sand the pin, all right? And you need to be very careful because this, this piece is very fragile and it can break anytime. So I will use one of my finger to put some back pressure and then do it slow, uh, gently until it's so shiny surface. As you may see, some appear silver color. That means this is a good contact. All right, I'm not.
trying to do too much on it. Um, uh, I just let, want to let you guys know about it. So same thing to the, the other pin. Some of you may know and some of you may not. The, the coil side, this end, this is a positive and we call high side. Means the high voltage is connected to this, this, this pin. The other one we call low side or negative. With the, and this is the output, the uh, output side. The laser bit will coming out from over here to here. As you may see, you know, this, this is a output, this is a lens and the beam is coming out from this way. So we call this one, this end is negative. All right, so I'm going to, uh, first of all, get, oh, by the way, this is uh, our, our, our brand power supply. This is a 60 watts, and we, we custom make it. And uh, I would say the quality is better than what you see on eBay. All right, first thing we need to trim it, uh, get a decent length of the wire. So I'm going to use the cutter. And I, I don't want to keep the, uh, the wire from, from, the, from, from, the, from the beginning. I need to chop it off because it could get, it may get a, a oxidate already. So it's better to start a new bare wire. So I cut it out. And possible, I will leave about one and a half inch. You may need to follow my way. This is uh, the way I'm doing for long. So, All right, so. and uh, we choose it. And. So we wrap up over here. That's why after we finish the, the wiring, we want to put a, a cable ties over here to lock up the cable, uh, prevent it from losing. So let's do over here again. Uh, let me get a tip, help it to secure it first. So what's the next? What's next? Uh, we have a cable tight, and uh, I'm going to use the cable tight gun. So first of all, again, you don't have to follow this way. Uh, if you come up a better way, you may use your own way. Uh, some of those I remember, they they were using some wire, like a more uh, uh, stronger wire, like a couple wire, they can use it to wrap up the connection. So my, the, this is my own way. So if you find this is a good way to go, uh, use it. But if you have your own way, then use yours, no matter. All right. Okay, put your finger here. So to absorb some shocking from the from the clip. All right, this time's good. Now after done, 
um, we still need to protect this wire, this area from arcing. So the best way to do it is to get a, a, a piece of silicone tubing. This is the same uh, that we use for water chiller. This is a water tubing. But as you may know, uh, silicone is really, is really good uh, insulation. This one can prevent up to maybe 50,000 to 60,000 volt. So we try to get a small piece, not too much. I would say, let me try this. Okay. We cut a small piece and we pull it in. Uh, maybe too much too. Uh, actually, the best way to do it is to bend this wire coming out from this up so you can cover it up with the silicone. But it seems I did already did this way. So I'm just trying to show you uh, what you need to do, but you can do a better way. Okay, so we are going to put the cap right here. And then we are going to use the silicone gel. Let me see, maybe this one gets stuck already. This one get cropped. Oh, okay, it's coming up. So we put actually we put something like this. Okay. You want to cover all the area you could because the arcing is coming out from from those areas, so you make sure it's a seal. All right. It was. It won't hurt if, even though you put more. All right. So I'm going to cover everything from the pin. Then we step up. After that, then we put the cap in. All right, we get one more thing. We need to put something on top. Peel it up. to get the wires because I'm going to use the, the red color wire later so that's why I got this a uh, couple pairs this is similar to a speaker wire and for grounding this is okay no special requirement and this is a low voltage so it's a totally safe and again let me use my way And this is the power supply. And I'm going to, going to show you guys how to do the current meter later. So I'm going to skip the current meter at this time. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just hook it up again. I don't like to use original uh, wire, so I'll cut it out. And this one, you don't need to be too long, so. Um, and then I have a heat shrink. Cut it out and put it in. Also, twist it as much as you can. 
And this part, if you have soldering iron, uh, sure, you can do the solder there on here. It doesn't hurt. But if you don't have a soldering iron, that would be fine. Just use uh, the heat shrink. Okay, uh, now I'm going to try on this tube. This tube with two wires, two pin wire. This is supposed to be easy way to for the for the connection. All right. Again, I I don't want to keep the original uh, wire, so I trim it off. Cut roughly one inch. And then this is my wire from my power supply. I think half inch should be fine for this. Okay. So before we make the connection, I want to insert a his string first and a I would say three inches three inches uh, silicone to pick put it on one end and then put the his string here now make the connection Inside the, the gear. Okay, this is actually pretty secure. Then I put the heat shrink here first, cover it up, and then get my uh, lighter. Shrink it. And if you don't ha have uh, the heat shrink, uh, okay, you can use uh, electrical electrical tape. But do, uh, don't assume the electrical tape can do the job alone without the silicone tripping. It's very dangerous. I served so many uh, laser machines and there, uh, there were two cases. I found out that the customer, uh, <laughs> uh, they, they were using electrical tape for the for the protection of uh, when they make the connection from the power supply high side to the laser tube, and they're using the electrical tape. End up that every time when he fire up the laser, there's an arcing happen from this to the casing. Um, they they thought that a couple round uh, protection from the electrical tape will help, but I'm telling you, even ten rounds, ten uh, webs is not going to help. You have to use this. Silicon to pick. All right. So after this, I'm going. I'm going to move this one up, couple here. Then I can use tape or uh, cable tight to secure the to pick. So far, I I like to use it, to use the cable tight. So. Still too much. Let me lower down the tension. Okay, 
That's good. Ah, get one more. So this is well secured. Uh, this is well protected from arcing. So this part is done. Um, then for the negative side, this is same to the other tube. Um, just strip it all and make a connection. Use the electrical tape or use the heat shrink, whatever convenient to you. All right, this is done. Okay, this is the last uh, tube that I'm going, going to show you how to make the connection. And I, I'm thinking this is the, the easiest way to, to make connection on this kind of laser tube because they have uh, two screws built on each end. So it's pretty easy to make a connection. Uh, I think you can see it here clear. This is for the high side, the positive. Because the coil, you can see the coil is right here. And then same thing to the negative, neg negative side and the output side. Okay, so let me do the positive side first. This one I want to get a little bit longer, maybe one and a half inch. Remember when you try to lose a screw or, or tie up the screw, make sure you put some back pressure from behind from underneath it. You don't want to just push the uh, screwdriver this way because you may crack the tube or, or change the the, uh, the lens. It could, it could be possible, right? So I always put my fingers underneath it before I do anything. So lose it. And again, now sometimes you may see some rusting or happen to the screw or on, on the connection. And I get used to it. Every time when I did those things, I would use this, uh, uh, some sandpaper to clean it up a little bit and before I do the connection. I even know the screw. But this one looks pretty good, so I'm not going to, to do it right here, but just let you know. Okay. Oh. This is pretty tough uh, doing it without the, the tube mount on the laser machine. Alright, so I put it right here. And when you put the wire, you need to think uh, in advance, because remember, there's a, a cap that we need to use it afterward. So you want, you don't want to put the wire this way. You said you want to do this way. Let me show you why. So I put the wire over here and I make a complete, at least a complete, I would say at least two twists. And then lock it up. need to be secure, need to be tight, but not over pressure, all right? After done, 
put the cap and when you put the cap in, care be careful, all right? So you and this is necessary. Remember, if you forget to put this cap on, and if this area, this piece is getting close to uh, uh, the chassis, you may see an arcing ha from happening. Uh, I remember when I repair one of the machine, uh, and I did a test because the customer didn't have the cap on, on their tube. It happened that the, the arcing the length of the arc is almost two inches, right? This is like that, that far. So the arc is jumping from the high side to the chassis and it reset the controller all the time, all right? So remember to put the caps on. And you want to secure the wire, uh, either use a electrical tape to wrap it up or use longer cable tight to, to wrap it, but uh, so I'm not going to, to do it right now. So uh, I let you guys do it. And then for the negative side, all right, I can actually just hook it up to the other side and finish the video. But as I said in the beginning, I want to show you guys how to hook up a current meter. Um, so many machine or so many customer, when they get the laser machine from eBay or from some manufacturer, they don't have the curve meter. They don't. And this is very, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't lock it. This is very dangerous to operate a laser machine without a curve meter. Because this is uh, the indicator to show us how much current going through the laser tube. Uh, for 100 watt AC2, 130 watt AC2, we don't want to go over 0.8 milliamp to 30 milliamp. As a matter of fact, most laser tubes nowadays, they can reach the peak power at 25 or below. Uh, when I test the GSI, uh, I can, for, for the for 130 watt, I could get a um, full power 130 watt at 22 or 23 milliamp. That's why I lock up the controller card, not over 26 BDM to keep the tube uh, to last longer, okay? And this current meter seems, seems effective. If you can see it uh, close, you see that the needle is not, I'm not able to, to settle for zero. All right, but, uh, Let's forget it for now. Okay, this is a 30 milliamp current meter, and this, this one's supposed to be good enough to cover any uh, power from you know, you know, 10 watt to 130 watt. Usually, we don't want to go over 30 milliamp, right? So, I'm going to use 30 milliamp for testing. There are two uh, terminals from the, from the back one is positive, and one is negative. You need to see to pay some uh, close attention to it. The negative side, we connect to the uh, ground or the negative wire from the laser power supply. The positive on the current meter connect to the negative of the laser tube. Okay, let me do it quick. This side, uh, or my, I can't see it from the reflection, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is the left. This was the negative on my meter, so I'm going to put it right here. And please pay attention. This one needs to be very secure because when the ground wire wire get loose you will encounter uh, arcing from the system and you are going to lose the laser power and it's bad. So you know, this connection get, by any chance, you get loose, all right? And, and then I use the red color wires indicator this is connected to the laser tube. But again, this is a negative for the whole wire from the terminal, uh, from the power supply to the, to the tube. This is all low voltage, so there's no harm.
All right, so the connection is completed. Now you have a complete, complete loop circuit for the laser tube and the laser power supply. Close or, or we call closed loop. This is a high voltage connect to the positive of the tube and then the negative connected in series with a current meter, 30 milliamp, and then the positive side of the current meter connect to the negative side of the laser tube. And then when you fire up the laser by turning the power, you can see the needle refraction, you know, from zero to up to 30 milliamp. For 100 watt or less, you make sure you never go over 28 milliamp. All right? Okay, that will be all for today and thank you for watching and if you like it, give me a like and or if you have any question, uh, just drop us an email or call us, Light Object. Thank you for watching.